How's it going YouTube and my future self? Welcome back to the Lab TCG. My name is Will and today we're going to, to be talking about how to sell Pokemon cards in 2023. Now it's been about six, seven months since I made the last video about this topic. It was titled how to sell Pokemon cards in 2022. So if you do want to check out an outdated version of this guide, feel free to go and check out that video. I'll go ahead and put it in the cards up here if you'd like to check that out. But it is 2023 and it's time for an updated way to sell Pokemon cards. We're going to be talking about some of the basic skills that I think you need, or at least things that will jumpstart your ability to sell Pokemon cards correctly or make some money doing so. We're going to talk about how I would recommend a starter sells Pokemon cards. And then we're also going to talk about how I sell Pokemon cards in addition to some of my fundamental beliefs around this topic, how I think people should be operating this business so that not only are they profiting for themselves, but also making customers happy at the end of it. So if that's what you're here for, you want to know how to sell Pokemon cards, you're in the right place. And the rest of my channel has tons of other educational videos on very specific topics like how to ship and package cards to more broader topics like how to sell on eBay. So if you're in the right space for Pokemon selling, I just jumbled that all up, but you're here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into it. So first I do want to talk about a little bit of my background. I've been selling Pokemon cards for about six years on and off. Uh, the old video, video mentions me and how I started selling at 14. I ran a Shopify store, had zero clue what I was doing, basically got handed a bunch of wholesale product that I sold online for like break even, but it was a great introduction to e-commerce. And from there, you know, my interest in the space kind of dwindled, but throughout this whole time, I was a competitive Pokemon player and Pokemon has been a part of my life for a long time. So when the pandemic hit, the fire to be a entrepreneur came once again and I started selling Pokemon cards online. This time, much more structured with a lot more business sense after taking business courses, working with distributors, selling singles on not only TCG Player, Shopify, eBay, Amazon, uh, you name it, I probably sold on it or I've had some experience with it, but that's what qualifies me for this information. And outside of that, this channel is the Lab TCG. It has about 2,900 subscribers. Um, I took a six month hiatus, but previously I was uploading all sorts of educational content about this topic. So that's a little bit about me. Now I want to hop into what I think some of the skills are that you need to sell Pokemon cards. Now, if you want to do this as a business, there's a, a bunch of business related things that you probably should be doing. You need to file as a business. You need to understand tax and we don't talk about tax on this channel, but I highly recommend you contact a local CPA for any tax related questions that you incur while doing stuff around this topic. But essentially, we're going to be trying to make profit from selling Pokemon cards. Over the years, the margins in this business, in my opinion, have started to decrease and the time that you need to put into it has increased. So not the greatest, but this is a very fun hobby to have. It allows you to make a little bit of money while being surrounded around one of the most popular uh, intellectual properties in the world and it's honestly amazing so with that being said some of the skills that i think you should have uh to do some of this stuff is basic accounting i you know the tax part can be handled mainly by a cpa but you do want to have some understanding of what's actually going on on the back end of all of that stuff so take an accounting course online or look up a few youtube videos on basic accounting i think one of the most common questions that comes out of the discord server where people talk about all this stuff is related to accounting and how different things are expensed or how things work like that so i would pick up some accounting skills additionally if you don't know microsoft excel or google sheets or equivalent I would say that's highly important. It's going to be super helpful in allowing you to not only price out collections that people are selling you to you, but also to predict prices of uh, sales that you're doing in the future. Once you get all of your inputs, like you know that TCG player has a 14% selling fee or every time you sell a booster box, it's going to cost you $8. Microsoft Excel is an excellent way to make models and spreadsheets of all sorts of things that you can store information. And it's also very good for keeping records of different things that you've bought and sold. So highly recommend you pick up some sort of skills around spreadsheets. Um, additionally, customer service is a big one. You will experience returns. You will experience complaints. Even if you were to run a perfect business with business cards and branding and you know you refund every order that comes through with an issue, inevitably you're going to need some sort of customer service because people are, they can be mean. And I've been doing this for long enough and I've had enough complaints, even though I try very hard to make sure that my end customer is happy. It does happen and being able to navigate those situations and knowing what levers to pull, whether that's, you know, escalating to TCG player help or eBay help or bringing in second opinions, it's really important to have customer service skills. 
The last skill that I want to briefly touch on is actually going to be operational efficiency. Now, this is something that I think you can learn, but I would definitely study how some of the other businesses work in the world. See what they do that makes them different, because in my opinion, in the year 2023, it is extremely important that the Pokemon business is as streamlined and optimized as possible. And I have various experience with operations like jobs, and I think that that's taught me a lot in how I run my business, how things are set up, making sure that things are as simple to do. You know, when you're setting up a, a workflow station for shipping, you know that you should have stuff flowing in one order. At least that's how I think you should do it, because that way you're not duplicating steps. You're not going from one station to the next station and repeating and mixing up all the stuff. It's just one simple flow. You have your, you know, your you pick your card over here, you add all your steps in between, and then you ship it here and it's gone. So I, I would study other businesses. There's a lot of extra stuff that you can do to really up your game in this space. And YouTube is an excellent place to learn that stuff from stuff that isn't actually Pokemon selling. If you need Pokemon selling tips, this is a great channel to learn from. There's also tons of other Pokemon business channels that are out there for that. So enough of the boring stuff out of the way. Let's talk about you as the viewer and how you can start a Pokemon business in 2023. Now, I would break this down into a bunch of platforms. Now, if you don't know what I mean by platform, there's essentially marketplaces and stores and different things like that that you can actually sell on to sell your Pokemon cards. You can sell Pokemon cards that are worth a penny. You can sell Pokemon cards that are worth upwards of $10,000. You can sell sealed product. You can sell anything Pokemon related on these platforms. And in my opinion, the biggest ones that are worth talking about are going to be TCG Player, eBay, Amazon, Shopify. Now, these four are all platforms that I have experience on selling. They all have their pros and cons. And for this video, we're, high, we're mainly going to be focusing on TCG Player, eBay, and Shopify. Now, if I was just getting started, I would be starting with TCG Player and eBay. And the reason I would do this is because TCG Player is probably one of the easiest sites to understand how to sell with uh, trading cards. This video is about Pokemon cards, but this applies to much more than just Pokemon cards. You could do Magic, you could do Yu-Gi-Oh, anything like that. But TCG Player is very simple. You go, you create an account with them, you just go to their login page, you hit sign up, start as a seller, read through any of the documentation that they give you, and once you're through, that's kind of it. You're essentially given a back-end store with you know an inventory tab, a pricing tab, an orders tab, and a bunch of these little spots that is now going to be your seller hub where orders come through and you see how much money you're making. Once you have a card, you know, say you have a Seismitoad EX from Furious Fists, you go to your inventory tab, you type in Seismitoad EX, the first listing that shows up, as long as it matches the card, you click into it. It's going to bring up a pricing matrix that says, okay, this is what the lowest price on TCG player is. This is what the median price is. This is what the average, the market price. It's going to give you all this different information. And for not only near mint, but lightly played, heavily played, moderately played, every single condition. Then once you go to the pricing tabs, you enter how much you want to price your card at and you enter the quantity, you hit save and boom. Your item is listed. No photos needed. Your item is now on TCG Player ready for sale. There are a lot of complicated steps into how you need to ship this item, which I would recommend you take a look at some of the other videos on this channel to do that. But essentially, that's how it comes to listing inventory. Once it sells, you ship it to the customer. And as long as there's no issues, the sale is complete. With eBay, eBay is better for a different purpose. In my opinion, the lower value cards should go on TCG Player, pretty much anything that's under $20, and high-end cards should go on eBay. The selling fees are pretty similar. eBay is about 14%, and TCG, or, uh, sorry, TCG Player is around 14%, and eBay is a little bit higher than that. But eBay does have tracked, stamped uh, envelopes that you, know, you can sell cards that are worth less money and still have tracking on them, where TCG Player, you can't really do that. But in my opinion, the taking the process to add photos, add a description, add all of the other information that you need to do on e uh, on eBay is much more worth your while if you're selling a higher end card where you know a customer is getting this card and, and might challenge your belief on what a near mint card is. So TCG or uh, TCG player is better selling lower end cards and eBay is better for selling higher end cards. Once you start accumulating lots of inventory, you list it onto these platforms and you're going to use your Excel spreadsheets to determine where your profits margins are, how much you can buy cards for and where you should be selling those cards. It's all preference. There are a lot of different ways to do it. And those are the two that I would stick for to selling singles. Now, in 2023, it's pretty hard to get a Pokemon distributor. But if you are able to get a Pokemon distributor, sealed product is going to become a hot topic for you pretty quickly. I would highly recommend that you sell this product on Shopify. Shopify has one of the lowest fees for selling. 
It is $30 a month plus 2.9% plus 30 cents for credit card fees. And that is a lot lower than TCG Player and eBay. Additionally, I think Shopify is very important for building a brand. When you build a brand, you don't you should be spending money on marketing, but if you upload social media content, you have a YouTube channel, you post on Instagram, you can actually attract customers for free without marketing, which at that point, the effort that you put into what you are promoting becomes the time and money spent, and you can convert customers without paid marketing. I've actually converted 99% of my Shopify customers through this YouTube channel and have not spent a dime on marketing in the traditional sense of like Facebook ads or Instagram ads or anything like that. So you could argue I've spent money on the YouTube channel, but as far as actual paid marketing, this YouTube channel has converted 99% of my Shopify customers. So I would highly recommend that you use Shopify for all that stuff. It's important that you also create value for your customers when you're doing this. Make sure that your items are packaged nicely, shipped safely, that when a customer has an issue, you're addressing it attentively and you are always there to help because at the end of the day, this is a passion project and you should be putting that passion towards your customers when they come to you with anything that they need. Also, don't be afraid to give out discounts. Don't be afraid to you know, see what your customers are interested in seeing. And I think Shopify is probably going to be your best platform for that because you pay way less in fees. You also get a personal website and you could do a lot more than just sell cards on a website. So that would be my recommendation for starters. TCG player for low end cards, eBay for high end cards and Shopify for sealed product. Now, if in my situation, this is how I'm going to be approaching uh, selling Pokemon cards in 2023. In 2023, I don't have as much time as I used to to run this business. And in my last video, talking about how Pokemon businesses have changed going into 2023, I talked a lot about optimization and efficiency in running a Pokemon business. I think that the best way to do this for me is going to be TCG Player Direct. Now, I didn't mention TCG Player Direct in the first part of this video because you do need to get to level 4 seller on TCG Player, which essentially requires you to do about 50 sales and have a certain feedback rating. Once you get to TCG Player Direct, they require you to have a couple thousand cards in inventory and a few other selling criteria. The good news about this is a lot of those criteria can actually be bypassed once you hit that level 4 seller. In this case, I already have a TCG Player account that is eligible for TCG Player Direct. Now you might be asking, what is TCG Player Direct? Well, essentially, TCG Player holds cards in their inventory at their uh, corporate offices in New York, I think. And when you say you want to list a card that you have, you have this Seismitoda EX, for example. When you list that through TCG Player Direct, it's actually the TCG Player location that is selling and shipping that card. You are then restocking TCG Player with your inventory once that card sells on your behalf. This is a lot better for buyers as when they buy through TCG Player Direct, they can buy 100 cards and it all comes from one package instead of the traditional way TCG Player works, where it comes from all sorts of different sellers. But this benefits the seller because instead of shipping out every single order week by week, day by day, you actually just fill out these little reimbursement invoices, which in my experience have come once a week. They could come three times a week, but it's a lot more consistent in scheduling and a lot less time spent than packaging hundreds and hundreds of envelopes, which trust me, if you do this long enough, it does get to that point. So for me, TCG Player Direct makes a lot of sense. Why is there no other selling platform besides TCG Player Direct for singles? Well, because TCG Player Direct also charges a premium on some of those higher end singles. In my experience, I have been able to sell cards for 50% more on TCG Player Direct compared to just regular TCG Player because that benefit to customers is so good that they're willing to pay a little bit more. So there's a lot of pricing study that you can do on TCG Player Direct and see where those thresholds are. And if you still want to sell on eBay, that's perfectly fine. But I wouldn't recommend hopping into TCG Player Direct unless you have a couple thousand cards. Additionally, into, uh, in addition to TCG Player Direct, I still plan on selling on Shopify, and this YouTube channel will still be around, similar to what I was talking about before. I don't spend, I don't plan on spending any marketing, so all the sales that I would be making through Shopify will be coming from through this website, uh, this YouTube channel. And eventually, I want to be able to get a card sorter so that TCG Player Direct is essentially automated. And where should you be buying cards? Local is the best way. It's the least amount of fees you can pay in cash. And I think that buying locally is the best way to do it. So that's going to conclude this video on how to sell Pokemon cards in 2023. If you have any comments, please leave them below. We covered a lot of information in this video. If you want to dive deep into any of the specifics that I mentioned in this video, please check out the other videos on this channel as they dive 
deep dive into every single topic that was just discussed. So without further ado, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great night and I'll see you all next week. See ya.